Welcome everybody to this episode of the Ninth Grade Experience Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Dutchko. The goal of the podcast is to give you the story of ninth grade students at Emmaus High School and beyond through the people who live it daily, the students and the staff. We attempt to touch on real issues and stories that ninth grade students and parents face in order to prepare them to know that ninth grade counts. And today's episode, we have a special uh, preview of the 2022 EPSD Mental Health Symposium. We have a uh, school psychologist here at Emmaus High School, Ms. Signorell, on to give all the details about what the uh, symposium is going to look like this year. We have an in-person keynote speaker on February 21st at Iron Middle School at 6.30 p.m. Uh, that's Dr. DePaul from Lehigh University, who's going to be talking about how to, be, how to parent a child with a mental health condition, um, and especially in the area of ADHD. Um, and in this episode, we talk a lot about all the different things that will be a part of the symposium, which runs through March 6th. So it's a great opportunity for parents, teachers to kind of listen into these different things as in the last two years, we have seen a rise in mental health uh, needs in our schools. And uh, it's a really important and great event hosted by uh, our counseling department uh, throughout the entire district. Um, so a lot of it is asynchronous. So you don't have to go anywhere except for the first night. So uh, if you go to search, search in Google, the easiest way to find the website is to search EPSD mental health symposium in the Google search bar. It'll take you to the website. Uh, the website is a, is a sites.google site. So it's pretty long. So just go to Google EPSD mental health symposium, and you will find the 2022 version there. So uh, we look forward to our conversation with Ms. Signorella. Um, also to keep in mind that uh, coming up in a few weeks here, we have Shave for the Brave at the end of this episode, and we'll put this at the end of some of our episodes here going forward. At the end of this episode is a commercial that I recorded uh, for the Shave for the Brave. Uh, this will be the seventh time that I've done the Shave for the Brave. So I'm um, trying to promote that event, which is March 11th down at the football field. Uh, and if you want to donate to me or to anybody, uh, the donations are coming in fast. It's probably the highest amount that has ever been raised before the actual event. They're looking to get to $100,000. So just, uh, again, you can go to stbaldricks.org and look for EHS Shave for the Brave for all the information to donate. Um, we even have Dr. Kiris, who's our principal, uh, shaving her head as well, too. So uh, if you're not going to support me, support her or support the entire organization. As I've always said, it's one of the uh, great events here at Emmaus High School um, and in our community. So please support that. If you're looking for any of our previous episodes, you can go to ninthgradeexperience.com. You can search up the many episodes. We talk about previous episode with Miss Signorella and us telling her ninth grade story, which is in season three, episode nine. Um, but we have lots of uh, lots of different episodes, lots of different topics that we you can talk about. Um, we actually highlighted last year's mental health symposium as well, too. And we try to talk about mental health as much as possible on the show uh, because we know it's a huge topic for students. So again, that's ninthgradeexperience.com. You can look us up on YouTube as well. Um, and then anywhere where you listen to uh, audio podcasts like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Amazon, all those places. So again, uh, this is a great episode highlighting a really great event here in our school district, the 2022 Mental Health Symposium. And here is school psychologist at Emmaus High School, Ms. Signorella, to tell us all about it. Welcome everybody to this episode of the Ninth Grade Experience Podcast. Uh, so today we are going to focus on an event coming up here at Emmaus High School and in the East Penn School District. Um, and uh, today's guest is Miss uh, Signorella. She has been on the podcast two other times before. So if you're going to look for her ninth grade story, she was on season three, episode nine, uh, talking with Dr. Pinho, uh, the school psychologist, as we were at that point in 2020. One, no, 2020 transitioning back to coming into the building for the first time in a remote setting or hybrid setting. So uh, that was what that episode was about. And then she was on last year around the same time talking about what we're going to talk about today, the 2022 version, the uh, mental health symposium. So Ms. Signorella, thanks a lot for joining us today. Thank you, Mr. Sescu. So I, I it was telling Ms. Signorella before we started that uh, I when I go out and talk about the podcast and talk about some experiences that lead people in their ninth grade year to becoming what they are today, I often bring up Ms. Signorella's story. But I refresh my memory and I was actually getting it wrong. So people that um, may have heard it, I always remembered it as being uh, gum in her hair in the cafeteria, but it was mayonnaise, which is even weirder, oh. I guess. 
No, cream, cream cheese. cheese. Here you go. I even wrote it down and still got it wrong. So cream <laughs> cheese, cream cheese in the hair led to Miss Signorella being a school psychologist. And if you want to learn more about that story, you should go back to season three, episode nine. She talks about it right at the beginning as she's talking about her ninth grade experience. So um, we've had that discussion. So today we're going to move on to the business at hand of talking about the 2022 Mental Health Symposium. Uh, if you have seen on our school website, uh, there have been uh, information sent out and through uh, our school emails and other things like that. So Miss Signorella, I'm going to let you kind of just give a brief overview overview of the symposium, where it's been. I know we're kind of, I think we might be approaching like a four or five year anniversary of it at this point. So uh, it's been something that's been gaining some momentum here in our district for quite a few years. Yeah, so thank you. Um, at the symposium, it has been, I, even I have lost track of when we actually started because uh, of the COVID vortex that is time. Um, uh, but uh, this started you know, several years back and um, our first one was all in person. And then we had to get creative with our second year because of COVID. Actually, I think it might've been canceled. Um, like I said, it's a, it's a blur. But um, we, because of COVID, we were able to do a lot of the presentations virtually, which worked out in the sense, a lot of families wanted, didn't have the flexibility to come when it was live, but they wanted the information. And as we had more um, uh, of the uh, feedback from each symposium, we have been getting more and more, um, some people like the idea of it being virtual, some want pieces that are um, in person. And so this year is the first year we've been able to actually offer that both of those. And I'm really, really excited about what we're, gonna, what we're doing this year in the, because we're actually kicking off our uh, mental health mental health symposium this year with a keynote speaker. So Dr. George DePaul from Lehigh University, he is a professor and dean of research. He uh, was he participated on our mini panel last year, and it was such an engaging speaker. And I had feedback from both both other panelists. Um, and from participants on how much they enjoyed uh, hearing what he had to say, that we invited him to be our keynote for this year. And we were just so um, thrilled that he agreed. Um, and, you know, he, he's going to be addressing really the core of what and how we started this mental health symposium, what it's really about. And that is, you know, empowering parents with the tools to address mental health within their own families and in their children and um, helping them to see how their role, how, you know, the role that they play, what they can do both on to, as a preventative measures and, and response um, uh, techniques. So, you know, it is really a valuable um, information that people can, you know, hear kind of like why it's important at the start of our event and then as the rest, like the, all of the presentations about the different topics are um, going to be presented asynchronously on through the, through the website. And it is, um, you know, we have so many great topics and I'll get into those in a little bit, but um, yeah, uh, having Dr. DePaul present is um, really exciting for us. So the first night of the symposium is going to be Monday, February 21st. So this will be up uh, before that. So it'll give a little bit of a time for people to hear it and, and you know, preview the, the whole event. Um, so the opening night is Monday, February 21st. It's going to be at 6.30 p.m. at Iron Middle School. So, you know, meeting the entire district, kind of in the middle-ish of the district there. So uh, people will be going to IR for that night. In addition to uh, Dr. DePaul, um, there's going to be the mock teen bedroom that I think has been at several different events um, throughout the, the years. Um, and I guess with, uh, you know, bringing it back to an in-person setting, we, we have those things. So that'll be interesting to kind of go. Um, I know parents can explore that as well. And then, of course, the, um, the MVPs of the year, um, the therapy dogs, will also be there as well, too. So um, the event is mainly for parents. I know 
know that um, we do talk to some the students on this podcast as well too. But this the symposium is geared towards parents. So maybe if you have not seen the dogs or your kids have been talking about the dogs, that um, you can go and explore those. You can also listen to the previous episode we did about the therapy dogs and the impact they're having here. So it's more than just the the speaker, uh, Doctor DePaul. There's the, the other events going on that night on February 21st as well. Um, yeah. What is the, uh, I want to just mention about the mock teen bedroom. If you haven't had a chance to experience that or, or see that, I mean, my first exposure to a, a mock teen bedroom was actually when I was in college and I was a resident assistant and they took us through a mock teen bedroom. And it's really just giving you um, hands-on learning about uh, identifying drug paraphernalia and the way drugs can be used and disguised, like disguised. Um, they talk, you know, learn about some kind of local drug trends, but really they set up this mock teen bedroom and there's, they'll have over a hundred items that are hidden that you as the participant can kind of, kind of go through and try to find and figure out. And I remember my experience when I first went through it and it was just shocking to me, the things that, um, like I would never even think would, would be, um, something that could, uh, be a drug paraphernalia item. And so, um, it was really, um, a, a, an awesome experience. So I, I really encourage you that if you haven't uh, experienced one of those uh, events that you come out and take a look. Um, the mock teen bedroom will be open both before and after Dr. DePaul's presentations before he speaks. So yeah, so that's good to know a little bit more about that. And it, you know, they do, they've highlighted that. I don't know if they've done it at the middle schools, I know, or they've had it at the high school, but when they've kind of talked about that, they have shown like pictures. I think there's a picture on the website too, um, about what it looks like. And, you know, again, it's all with this mental health uh, focus of trying to, you know, help our students and help our, our own kids to, um, you know, eliminate things that may interfere with students' mental health or enhance it or, you know, make it a little bit more troubling than it, it might be. So just and all that knowledge and kind of seeing all those different things and, you know, especially teenagers, they're always like two steps ahead and they're always, you know, trying to figure out the newest ways to kind of keep that stuff hidden away. Um, just like, you know, we did in, you know, the 1990s and how parents might have done before that too. You know, it's not a new phenomenon of trying to hide things that nobody wants to be found. Um, so that's a pretty cool uh, experience there. Um, real quick about Dr. DePaul. Uh, it says on the site um, that his area of interest is ADHD or, you know, that kind of area. Is, it, is this topic going to be mainly about that or is it just a, a kind of a general, um, like, because it says, like, how to parent a child with a mental health condition? Is he focused mainly on, like, all sorts of things? Is ADHD kind of his specialty topic? Um, I, I would say ADHD is kind of his specialty topic, but he's going to address kind of all of mental health um, and and um, the importance of of it, like as I discussed earlier, like he, he's, um, if you even go find him on YouTube, you can find um, some other presentations that he's held. Um, and he's had, uh, I mean, he's, he's very engaging. And um, the information is certainly broader than just ADHD. So that will be the first night. And then after that, basically all the rest of the sessions for the time, for the rest of the time, um, it goes from, uh, Monday, February 21st to Sunday, March 6th, the rest of the time, uh, all the other presentations will be virtual or asynchronous kind of allowing you the time whenever you want to go on and take a look at some of these, uh, things as well. I wanted to highlight two of the ones that are, uh, through Zoom that are live that you can't necessarily do asynchronous. Um, and they touch different, uh, way different topics. Um, there is another mini panel, um, which would be March 3rd at 7 p.m. That's going to be through Zoom. And some of the topics on that one were kind of interesting. They're talking about sleep, um, coping skills, organizational skills, um, parenting skills too. So we're helping, you know, focus on those kinds of things. So if I was going to tune into the mini panel, what are some, like I, you know, those are some of the things, but, um, is it, what would that look like? It's just going to be different experts from the different pair presentations that we'll be presenting. Yeah. So everyone who is participating in the mini panel has a presentation within the symposium that you can watch. Um, and they are about those different kind of topic areas and they will be there to kind of answer other other questions and um, 
and they'll have the, and it's, what's nice about it is it's meant to be interactive. So if you happen to watch, say a couple of those uh, presentations uh, asynchronously and you are like, I wish I had more information about this, or I have a question about this, I highly encourage you to, to sign up to come to the mini panel. The link to get the Zoom, uh, to access to the Zoom is on the website. And um, I know we had um, Dr. Bagley, um, she uh, is a professor at Muhlenberg College. She uh, did the presentation on sleep, which was absolutely phenomenal. Um, and she was in our mini panel last year and another person who was very well received. Um, and she, um, it, well, all of them really, they, they um, enjoy talking about these, these things and they have so much to offer. And it gives parents the opportunity to ask um, their questions. In a, in a safe environment. And, you know, it's, if people aren't comfortable talking on, on camera, that's okay. Last year we had people, you know, their cameras were off, but they, you know, asked for their, you know, verbally, or if they wanted to put it in the chat. So um, it's, it's perfectly fine. Um, and we were really excited. We enjoyed um, the mini panel piece of it last year. And Dr. Bagley, if I remember right, she actually presented at the school board meeting a while ago when, uh, you know, before COVID, one of the things that we were really focusing on was like taking a look at like scheduling and making sure students were getting enough sleep. So she is not a stranger to the district and a stranger, you know, you could go on and uh, I believe she even has a presentation that she did for the district that's available as well, too. So, um, so you know, definitely people that are people are a little bit familiar with and the topics are, are all really relevant and we'll talk about, you know, some more of the topics in a second. Um, the other one that's going to be um, live through Zoom which I thought was a really interesting one. And this is kind of an, I don't, I don't know. And in, in my world of just teaching, I feel like it's not something that I, I think about or see a lot, but I'm sure in the counseling side slash, you know, school psychologist side, I'm sure you're seeing this all the time and, and, and kind of, figuring out how to help students with this. Um, on March 2nd at 7 o'clock, uh, Kristen Day is going to present um, on the topic of Strength is Beautiful. Um, but her, her topic is a survivor's message, parenting a child with disordered eating. And uh, that's a really unique one because it's not something that, you know, is hugely, like, popu like widely popular I shouldn't say popular, but like a wide disorder, but it's one that's definitely, I think, growing and um, how we react to that. And again, that's not something that uh, me as a classroom teacher, I don't necessarily see that when they come in to learn about science, but I think that's a really important one that's affecting a lot of our students, especially with coming back from the pandemic. And, you know, it, I think a lot of these, we'll talk a little bit about how that's, a lot of these are on the rise now that we're back in person, but I think that's a really unique one and a cool one to offer. So what can you tell us about Kristen Day on March 2nd? Yeah, so uh, Kirsten is, um, uh, she's no stranger to the stage. She has um, many, uh, she's presented in many, um, like to, to um, and in medical uh, practices. Um, she has presented at um, inpatient facilities for those who have um, uh, eating, who have disordered eating. So um, she, and she's presented at like national conferences. She's really um, a well-spoken individual and we're very, very fortunate to have her with us. Um, and you're right, uh, most people, you know, it, this disorder can be invisible to a lot of people. And which is why it's all the more important for families to know kind of the signs and what to look for. And as someone who had, she had lived through it, you know, she can speak to um, kind of that piece and then how to, now she as a mother, now she is parent, she is a, as a parent, you know, has a different perspective on it. And, um, is going to be sharing that with us. I mean, a lot of times a, a, a piece of disordered eating um, is that feeling of loss of control and being able to, you know, taking what you are, know what you're able to ingest is a way to control, you know, obtain some level measure of control. That's certainly not all of it, but um, we have seen an uptick in disordered eating and the pandemic I am sure is, a, one of those culprits in in kind of causing that rise with how much we are just how lost we all lost some control as a result of the pandemic and so um it is 
certainly something that if you, you know, you think, oh, not my kid, you know, not my child, um, you know, it, it's worth having the information um, because you just don't know. And um, it is knowing the signs and knowing what to look for. And I can't tell you how many times I, people would think, oh, that's not something that my child would do, but um, is the case. So um, it's important just to, to understand it. And um, we're really very fortunate to have her. And again, it's, it'll, there'll be an opportunity if families have questions um, at the end of her presentation to issue that they wanna ask. Um, I, I highly encourage you the link for that Zoom again is also on the website just to, so you sign up, it's just so that you, you have access to that link. Uh, and I, I like what you said, um, like in reference to, I think a lot of the whole symposium is that kind of idea of like, it's not my child. Like it's not, it can't be my child. Like if you look down the list of some of the other topics that are going to be presented, um, ADHD, uh, conflict versus bullying, drug trends, LGBTQ plus uh, I identity, managing anxiety, sleep and well-being, uh, resiliency through relationships. Those are just uh, some of them. Um, a lot of times, like parents don't think like it's it's not my child. And I think if anything, over the last 20 months, 24 months at this point, a lot of time, I think parents are becoming more aware that it, it very well might be their child. So I, I really like this, you know, the symposium in itself, because it allows parents to kind of get a lot of information about a lot of these different topics. And maybe not all of them apply to your specific child. But, you know, it's good to have this wide range, because, you know, just Miss Signorella is our, one of our school psychologists, and she is seeing, I'm sure, the uptick in people just coming down. And, you know, people are dealing and, and with a lot of different stuff and struggling through a lot of different things. And, you know, it's really kind of critical. And I think having a symposium like this is, is really important for the community to be able to, like, have a way to identify these things without it, like, having to be, like, a, a gotcha or, like, to feel shame about it. So um, have you know like, I know that it's progressed a lot over the last four years, but is this something that, like, parents have asked for? Is it something that, like... Or just as we've seen as a school community, this is our way to kind of educate the community about all these different things in, in one kind of package setting here. Um, that's a really good question. Um, I wouldn't say anybody has asked for it, but what we have found is the response is, I didn't know how much I needed this until it was presented to me. And it, you know, the feedback we've had from past symposiums has just been overwhelmingly positive. And a lot of people want to know, you know, want to continue to learn and continue to know more. Some of the presentations that we have on the uh, are um, ones that we had from last year, and we did that intentionally because people, um, you know, as the word spreads, the, ma the material is still relevant and still important. And we we're hoping that it, as more people learn about the symposium and they're getting more access to. It. And so what you're trying to do is, you know, uh, some of them certainly were updated um, because, like for example. The, the Karen Foundation did a presentation on dr uh, current drug trends. And, um, and they do an update on that every year because that's something that changes every year, right? Um, I know I did a presentation with uh, my colleague, Sharon Valentine on parenting. And um, it, that, it, we, we reused that one this year so that, because it was very, very well received last year. And we're hoping that it reaches more, even more people this year. And, the thing is with with mental health it it's not just about you know my kid where they're at right now and it's also helping families to understand and that's why a lot of the parenting tech pieces are in there is that how parents respond often influences their child's behavior and that's super important for families to understand in that and it starts when they're very very young and so the, the earlier we can educate, I mean, I think there's some misconceptions at times that this is only meant for, you know, at, you know the middle school, high school population, um, just because that's maybe where the venues are held, like where event, these events have been held, but that is not, absolutely not the case. You know, we have been very intentional about making sure that while there are some that are specific to adolescents, there are some that are specific to, to young children. And this is truly a, um, 
you know, a broad spectrum of um, younger children versus older children and, and older children. And I know I can speak from my own presentation with the um, uh, small things managing big emotions is that it's, um, it even starts before they even get to school age, like how you, how you, how they manage them as, as they're young and they're toddlers. And are you building up their ability to have independence and, and um, their, their um, self-esteem and like, the, you know, I always use the example in our presentation of, you know, if you have a toddler who is, you know, wants to climb onto the couch, all right, and you, you see them kind of struggling to get up there, do you just help them get up or do you let them work at it? And when they get there, they have this huge smile on their face of like, they were so proud of themselves that they did it. But if you did it for them, that kind of takes it out and that almost builds in an example of, you know, enabling, right? So, in, but if you give them encouragement, it's like, just keep trying. I want, like, I'm here, I'm here to, and, and, and you know, I, that happened in, with my own child and I watched and the biggest grin crossed her face when she was able to get up on that couch and she just felt so proud of herself. And that's a small example, but an example of, it starts early. It's, it matters what we do as parents. Um, and it, it, it just has this ripple effect down the line. So it, it is absolutely also meant for parents with young children to, to um, familiarize themselves with these topics. And I feel like we discussed that story last year as well, too, kind of in the lead up to the symposium, because I remember that story about the couch and, and getting on the couch. And we even see it today. Like, you know, I, we, we both work at the high school here and we see that like sometimes students don't have that sense of like, you know, doing stuff on their own. And it's important. Like you don't think like what you do at like four and five lays the groundwork for high school age kids, but you see it and it kind of comes through. And, you know, it is kind of interesting when you do see a student that kind of is challenged to produce something on their own and maybe they're not used to it. They do have a sense of like, wow, I accomplished that. That was pretty awesome. Like, so giving students that sense and, and a lot of the mental health things, I, I think a lot of times we talk about like the, the role of the changing role of schools. Like when I'm an outsider and I look at this and it's like, you're spending two weeks on this and it's mental health, but is, how is it helping them learn the things they need to learn? How is it helping them to better the test scores? Not that anyone's really looking at the test scores, but you know, when you have an outsider point of view of like, why is the school district doing all of this stuff when it's not like motivated by in the classroom, you know, reward what would your response to that be is you know the the focus on mental health and why it's so big and and why does the school district need to focus on it i think if you ask any parent who has a child struggling with mental health they know that they're not able to function in school there's there's difficulty with getting to complete their work go to school like there's um you know or you get that the belly aches in the morning about i'm not wanting to come to school or Mental health precedes all of that. It's foundational. It is um, it is essential in terms of our own personal, you know, if we're not well, we're not ready to learn. And we're not going to get out of education what we can if we are not in a good emotional place. And it is um, vital for students. I mean, it, it goes speaks to the fact that, you know, I think what you're describing is a little bit of a frustration for me in that mental health is still stigmatized in our society. Um, maybe less so than it was, you know, 30, 40 years ago, but it's still very much stigmatized and um, it's, it, it, nobody wants to admit that it's something that they struggle with. Yet I struggle to think of one person who may not, I, I'm sure some, everybody is going through their own something or other. There are varying degrees of it, but there, everybody's dealing with something to some um, degree. And I, it's our ability to cope and manage and, um, and talk about these, these things that sets the stage for our ability to be successful, right? And that's true of children and adults. But if we can educate, and that's why the symposium is for parents and adults, because 
we are giving them the, that empowerment and those tools and that awareness so that they can then model that and, and support their children. And so we're hopefully building this, this um, momentum of, of positive response to mental health that, so that people are in a better place to learn and a better place to achieve their goals. And I, that's the reason why we like to have this episode on because it kind of highlights such an important part of the school life. We talk about it on the podcast all the time about, you know, getting yourself involved and, and getting yourself like, you know, mentally right. You know, I think last year at the end of the school year when I did a, um, a little mini survey of students, the number one or the number one thing that students said they wanted to hear more of on the podcast was how to deal with mental health issues. So I think it's a very critical topic. I think, you know, the symposium is an awesome opportunity for parents to learn more about it. Um, so uh, as we wrap up here with Miss Ignorella, just kind of give you the details again. Uh, and one other thing I wanted to point out on the website, um, there's also another page that has six free apps to manage mental health. Dr. Pinho put that together. So maybe you don't want to watch any of the videos. I don't know why that you wouldn't, but hey, you know, maybe you don't have time, but you have apps on your phone. There are six cool apps that you can put there and they deal with like you know calming and, and mental health and those kinds of things so they're available on the website as well too so the symposium runs from monday february 25th to sunday march 6th um the f the first night is live at ire at 6 30 on february 21st the rest of it's all asynchronous um I found the easiest way to find the website is if you just Google East Penn School District Mental Health Symposium. If we try to give you the entire website on here, it's, it's a sites.google.this.that, and it's, you know, it's not the easiest thing to find. So if you're looking for the website, just Google East Penn EPSD Mental Health Symposium, and it'll take you right to the 2022 page. But uh, is there anything else you'd like to add in, Ms. Signorella, about the event or anything else you want to let parents or anyone listening kind of know about what, what's going on? No, I, I think we hit on really all the highlights. Um, like like you said, the, the, the asynchronous presentations will be available. They'll, they'll go live on that Monday morning of the 21st. And, um, and we hope to see you all there um, for those for that live event that evening. We're, um, we're really hoping to, to fill the auditorium and, and, um, and, you know, have a, have a successful event. All right. So thanks to Miss Signorella for joining us today, talking about the 2022 Mental Health Symposium. So remember, just go to Google East Penn, East Penn School District Mental Health Symposium for all the details. All of the links will be up there. Um, the Zoom links to join the, uh, the sessions on March 2nd and March 3rd will be there as well, too, that you can access all that. And then the apps and all the other things. So Miss Signorella, thanks a lot for joining us today. Thanks. And if I could just say one last, uh, uh, last thanks to the other members of the, of the mental health symposium Com planning committee, uh, Amy Williams, who's the communities and schools, um, uh, site coordinator, Noel Gassick, who's also a school psychologist in the district and Alyssa Pilsitz, who's a school counselor in the district who, um, were also very integral in making all of this happen. So thanks to them. Yep. And thanks to all the school counselors and uh, school psychologists. We just had national school counselors week in February, right before the symposium. So they have had a extremely tough, but an extremely important position and job in our school in the last 24 months. So, uh, it is greatly appreciated that a you could find time today to uh, to, to chat and b for everything you you're doing and have done for students. So thank you very much, and uh, go log into all the symposium stuff and uh, help yourself and help your help your child at home too. So thanks a lot for joining us. Thanks, Chris. Hey everyone, I'm Chris Stuchko. I am the host of the Ninth Grade Experience podcast. And I have been here at Emmaus High School for 13 years. And in my time here at the high school, the event that I think has been one of the greatest examples of how our community comes together is the Shave for the Brave event. I am one of the few people um, who has participated as a Shavy in every one of the events. So it started in 2010 uh, and in 2011. 2013, 15, 17, 19, and I will be again shaving my head here in 2022. Um, I've 
risen to the rank of something called Knight of the Bald Table. So it's kind of interesting uh, that I have been able to do that. So why did I originally become part of Shave for the Brave? Um, it was because of a track team member in 2010 came into my classroom. I was a new teacher in 2010 here to the high school and said, do you want to participate in an event? And I said, sure. And they gave me a neon green t-shirt, which I still have today. Um, there were no Shave for the Brave shirts at that time. And it was really small and nobody really knew what it was about. Um, and we raised a little bit of money that year. And now here we are in 2022 and we're attempting to raise over $100,000 um, each year. This event has grown and grown and grown. And this year we're taking it back to its roots. It used to be outside at the track. So I'm excited to have it be outside again. So it'll be kind of fun to go back to where it was in the, in the beginning. So hopefully all of you who are watching this, you can learn about Shave from the Brave, Shave for the Brave, and you can look at all the posters and, and listen to all the stories that people are going to tell around the school here. But it is an event that makes me, East Penn, proud, Emmaus proud um, to see everyone coming together in order to raise money. Um, I would recommend going to the event, donating if you can, volunteering to have your head shaved. It is definitely one of those things when you participate in it, it'll leave a lasting impression on you. So uh, participate in Shave for the Brave on March the 11th. And uh, hopefully you come out and support everything that's going on. Show some pride in your school. Um, it's something that we can all rally behind helping to end childhood cancer. So thanks a lot for listening. And hopefully we will see you out there at the event on March 11th.